recently a viewer requested that we take a look at pedal switching. So we're going to have a look at this vintage electroharmonics pedal. We're going to move on to a more modern pedal and see what the switching difference is between them. We're going to look at this, the simple three pole dual throw switch and how we can use it to switch effects in and out effectively and also control an LED to tell us whether the effect is on and off, such as the one seen here but not seen at all on the vintage pedal. If we take a look at this old vintage small stone from 1976, first thing to note is it doesn't have an indicator LED on it, so there's no LED to turn it on and off with this switch. Now, if we look at it, we can see the switch in here has two poles, one there and one there on this side, and only one connection there. So. In fact, it only has one pole and it's a dual throw switch. So we say it's a single pole dual throw. Now looking at a more modern pedal, such as this one, we'll see that there's a switch wiring board here. And if we have a look at this very carefully, if I bring it up to the camera, you'll see there's some traces on here. So some things such as this pin here and this pin here are joined together. Now, as we go through this video and the different switching systems, We'll find out why that is. Switches come in all shapes and sizes and here's an example of just a few switches here. We have the push to make types, the push to break types, so these are always on until we push them and they're off. We have the through hole versions of those and you can get surface mount versions as well. Then we have switches with different throws and different poles. So this is a single pole, but it's a three position switch. And it says on it, if you can see that, on, off, on. So in the center, it's not connecting the middle pin to either side pins. When I move it that way or that way, it will. Here we have what's called a single pole dual throw switch, where the center is our incoming signal and it connects to this side or this side. Or well, we can make the sides our incoming signal and connect either of them to the center. Here's another version of the same thing to mount on a smaller circuit board. And then we can start to add poles to these things. So this one is a dual pole dual throw switch, which means that these middle pins are either connected to these outer pins or these outer pins based on the switch position. Building on that, we get to our guitar pedal and we see that it actually has three poles and it's a dual throw switch. So these center pins will either connect to these pins at the top or these pins at the bottom. Now, before we continue, let's have a look at some circuit symbols for switches. We can have the most basic type of switch, which is a single pole, single throw switch and looks like this. Single pole, single throw. That means your incoming signal would come in here go through the switch and if it was open it would be an open circuit and if it was closed it would continue through to the other side of the switch. We also have our push button type switches which are usually drawn like this and that can either be normally open and it's denoted with an n.o usually or we can have a version that is normally closed n.c and that's these type of switches when you're actually having to push it in order to make the contact or break the contact depending on what type of switch it is. Uh, it's worth saying actually, as I've just noticed this, that often the normally closed ones drawn like this with the switch underneath so you'd push it this way. Now we can start adding different outputs to our switches so we could have a single pole but now we can have a dual throw. So our signal's coming in here, perhaps, or it might be coming in the other side. And it's going either this way or this way. And this is called single pole dual throw switch. And this is its circuit diagram. Now we can add poles to these as well. So we could have a switch that had, here's one pole. And that can go either way and then we could add another pole to that switch and then these are joined together 
So when this switches down to there, this also switches down to there. And we could use that, say, to feed in our guitar. And this could go perhaps to here. And we have guitar out or the output jack. And then this could go off to our circuit board. This could be the input of our circuit board and the output of our circuit board. So we can now bypass our circuit. This is called true bypass, this setup here. And it's not how the vintage electroharmonics pedal is wired. Now, before we continue, I just want to say that we should probably understand how the jack works before I look at its circuit symbol as well before we continue. So we've got a jack socket here. We've got this bit that connects to the tip of the jack and this bit that connects to the sleeve of the jack. Now, if I just grab a jack cable and plug it in, you'll see that happening. So see how the tip is connected to there. Then you've got this insulating ring and then you've got the sleeve, which is connected to this part here and this tab uh, and this tab, sorry. And then the tip is connected to this tab. Now, usually this part is grounded. So in most of our circuits, we can just draw that as a ground symbol and the ground symbol looks like this. Sometimes you'll see it also drawn like this but it usually means ground in a circuit. Now, in order to draw a jack, we usually draw a sleeve connection like this, and then we draw this, which is connected to the tip. And this, I'm gonna ground it here, is connected to the sleeve. Now, with that in mind, let's move on and take a look at how the switch is wired in the vintage pedal. So now let's have a look at the switching in this vintage electroharmonics pedal versus the switching in this newer electroharmonics pedal and look at some diagrams that show you how those switches work. So we saw earlier in this pedal, there's just a single pole dual throw switch. So it's got one, two, turn it over, three terminals. Now, before I continue, you'll note that the instrument inputs on that side and the amplifier outputs on that side. So your signal throws through this pedal in this direction. However, when we're working on pedals, we tend to have them upside down. And that means our signal goes in this direction. So we tend to draw the circuit diagrams from left to right for that reason, because when you're looking at it like this, you've got the pedal open, this is your input and this is your output. So that's what I'm gonna do in these diagrams. So first of all, let's draw our input jack, connection to the tip and we'll ground the sleeve. We'll call this in. Let's draw our output jack, connection to the tip and we'll ground our sleeve. Now, we already know this has a single pole dual throw switch in it. So what we'll do is we'll draw that in here like this. There's your dual throw and then this is just one pole, which is denoted by this side. And then obviously we have an old, really nicely handmade circuit board here and I'll have an input and an output. Now our signal comes into the jack and goes into the switch. So we'll draw that in and I'll draw it in blue and it goes in here like that. And then in this position, it's going to go straight out of the switch and out of the output jack. Let me just label that up. Now this is our bypass because we bypassed the effect. Now let me take the output of the effect, because we need to switch this out, and wire it up to here. Now we've used up all the throws and poles of our switch, but we haven't connected the input of our circuit. So at this stage, if you're trying to reverse engineer something like this, you're probably wondering, how does a circuit get any input 
Well, let's have a look at the pedal and see if we can work it out. So here is the pedal. And if we take a careful look at this, we'll see this is the input jack and this is the output jack. And we can see this blue wire here. And this blue wire travels down through here and goes to the other side of this switch. It actually ends up over here. And again, we'll see another blue wire on this side, which is here, and that crosses over to the other side and ends up on our output jack. Now, before I go on, it's worth noting that these purple wires here, as you can see, it is connected to the sleeve and therefore this is a ground wire. So we can ignore these purple wires. Now you might note there's only one blue wire going to the output and that's exactly what we've got in our diagram here, these blue wires. And we've got this brown wire here that's going to the switch and we've drawn that in red in our diagram right here. But you may also notice that there's a brown wire here that goes into the input of the pedal right here. And you'll know that's coming out of the same tab as this blue wire that's going to the switch. So our signal is split here passively, and this is a passive split. Let's draw it into our circuit diagram. And I'll draw it in a different colour again so we can see what's happening. So here we have another brown wire. I'm drawing it in green just to differentiate it from these other. And it's going down to here. Now this is our small stone. This is how it switches. So this is 76. Small stone. Now what this means is you've got your input. And when you're in bypass, like this switch is at the moment, your signal is still going into the circuit. Now this circuit could potentially load your guitar signal, or you might get some parasitic effect from the components on your guitar signal, or signal might leak backwards in this direction and go out of the output, resulting in a noisy signal. So we don't tend to do this these days. We use what's called true bypass instead or buffered bypass in some cases. So you can see in 1976, this is the way it was wired and you'll find that kind of switching in most of those old vintage pedals. So next, let's look at how we can add a pole to our switch because this is a single pole dual throw SPDT switch. So let me write that here. Single pole dual throw or SPDT. So when you see a switch advertised that's called an SPDT switch, this is what they're talking about. Now let's add another pole to this. Use a dual pole dual throw switch and see if we can bypass this circuit entirely when we're switched in this direction. Okay, so now we're going to look at the true bypass circuit. So as I said before, what we need now is to use a dual throw but add another pole to our switch. So here, and then these are mechanically joined. So when this one's up here, this one is as well. And when you engage the switch, it switches both that pole and that pole as well. So you might guess that this is called a dual pole, dual throw switch and you'll see it written like that D P D T. Now we need our input jack again and I'm going to draw on this side again for the reasons I said before and our output jack and obviously we want a circuit of some description let's draw its input there and its output there. 
So we're coming into our switch. Now what I'm going to do is come in this side. So I'm going to go up there and around there. And then we're going to bridge these two together and then go out of the output. So that is our bypass. And you can see it's not going to the input or the output of the circuit and it's not a split signal. Now let's quickly add in our circuit. So there's the output. So we want to feed the output from here out to there. So let's quickly draw that in. That's going in this direction. And obviously when our input comes in and it's switched down to there, we want this to feed our circuit. So we'll just bridge that there to denote they're not connected together. So when this switch is in the downwards position, it's going to go into your input down here through the circuit, out of the circuit, and out. The signal's not now split like it is here on this one, so we call this true bypass. Now here, I've joined the top of this pole to the top of this pole. And do you remember early on, I said, if we look at this carefully, we'll see some of these are joined, like this one to this one, this one to this one. Hopefully we're beginning to see why that is. Now you may notice almost all modern guitar pedals have an indicator light such as this LED here to denote whether they're on or off at quick glance. So what I've done in order to look at this is build one of these LEDs onto the breadboard with a single pole dual throw switch here and at the moment you can see it's off and if I move this switch you'll see that it's on. Now in the case of this and I'll just turn it off so it doesn't affect the camera I'm using one of these tiny little switches here. So this is single pole and then a dual throw. Now this is equivalent to one line of this switch here. Single pole, dual throw, next pole, dual throw, next pole, dual throw. Actually, it's this way around on the switch. So it would be more like this. So this is like having three of these little switches connected together. So we can use this, add another pole and add an LED indicator to our circuit. So before we do that, let's just redraw what we had before. So we had our input and again our grinder sleeve and our output and our grinder sleeve. And then we had our switch here with its various poles and there were two of them, but then let's add a third pole down here. And that's denoted by, and that's denoted by one, two, three. So here, let's draw it in the same colours we had before. We're bringing our signal in to here bridging these across to here and we're going out of the output jack. Let me draw some arrows on to show signal flow. And then we had our circuit with its input and its output and we were coming over here, going into our input, coming out of here and going out of our output. So when the switch is in the downward position, and perhaps I should actually mechanically join these together as they would be in the diagram to show they all switch at the same time mechanically. So now we've got this extra pole here and when it's at the bottom, we want our LED to be on. So let's draw a circuit for an LED. So here's our LED with its light, light emitting diode. Let's draw a resistor. I'm just going to use a 1K because that's what I've used in that resistor. You can probably go down to 330 ohms, 470 ohms there, but this will be 
really bright. This is bright anyway with a 1K resistor. And just think about when you're looking at your pedal and you stand on the switch, how actually bright you want this LED to be. And this is connected to the battery. This is our anode and this is our cathode, obviously. So the more positive and the more negative side. So we want this to be connected to the battery. And let's put it on this side. This is positive. And this is negative. Now we want to run this through the switch. So we can do that. So it's in bypass at the moment, so we don't want it to be lit up when it's up there. So let's connect this side of the battery to here and then this side of the circuit. So you can see when the switch is down, it's going to start going through the circuit and out there. But it's also going to connect this separate circuit for our LED. And this might be our 9 volt battery, which is also powering our circuit as well in there. And this is how most of these modern pedals are wired in true bypass mode. Now, the only issue with this is when this switches down, uh, switches up, sorry, to here in true bypass, the input and output are what we call floating. So they have no reference voltage. So you can get noise onto these lines and sometimes it can affect the circuit if it uses some kind of oscillator in it or an amplifier with lots of gain you might be better off grounding the input when you're switching at the moment we can't really see how to do that from my diagram so what we're going to do now is we're going to take one of these boards here like this pedal's got in it only a slightly more complicated one with an led and we're going to reverse engineer it and see how it's wired now you may have come across some of these whilst you've been looking at pedal kits and things like that. And this is a board that takes the guesswork out of wiring wires between these contacts for you because it's already done. This one comes from Fuzz Dog's Pedal Parts. And it looks like this on this side and you can probably see some of the traces here. And then it looks like this on this side and you can see that it's got some more traces here. So it's a double sided circuit board. It's been professionally made. Your switch sits in it like this and you solder it in. And then you'll see there's a room there for a diode. Let me just get this the right way around. And you'd position that diode at the right height for your pedal and drill the relevant holes. And then obviously your resistor goes in here where it says R1. You put in your resistor for this LED. And then, let me take those bits out so we can better see. You see these are all labelled up here. Let me put it the right way around. Input to your circuit, output from your circuit. 9 volts ground and then this side you've got jack input jack input ground jack output jack output ground and then we've got power ground and plus 9 volts there as well so this is where you feed your power in and then these four go to the circuit 9 volt the circuit ground the circuit input and the circuit output so it makes wiring of these things extremely easy now what i want to know is does this ground the circuit input when I go into bypass mode by pressing down on the switch. So now let's have a look at it and reverse engineer it and see exactly what happens. So in order to better see this, what I've done is I've taken a photo of it and I've blown it up in Photoshop so we can reverse engineer it. And I've done both sides. So this side is obviously this way around and then we flipped it like that. It's important to note that. Because you can see, take R1, which is on this side. If I flip it round, it's on the other side. So I've carefully gone through and relabeled all the connections on this side, as you can see, because they're not actually labeled on the board. So we can work out exactly what's going on with our switch. 
And I've tried to colour code it here as well so you can better see what's happening. I'm just going to put that up there. So here we have our jack input. So this is the input of our jack. It's being fed off the tip of the jack input. And you'd run a wire basically from this tab to this input. And on my diagram here, I might be tempted to use a yellow wire just because I've drawn it in yellow, for example. Now we can see that that's going over here to this part of the switch, but it's also connected to this part of the switch. Now let's have a think here what's going to happen. So when our switch is in this position and this middle bit is connected to this side, there's going to form a connection between here and here, here and here, and here and here. So it's going to come in here and it's connected to here. So it's going to jump across there because of our switch and it's going to go down here and go into our circuit board. It'll go around our circuit board, out of our circuit board, back into this part of the switch, which is connected obviously to this part and out of our jack output. So maybe our jack outputs over there and our input jacks over here. So it should be. So we'll get that to rest there in shot, just above the ground symbol I've drawn. And we very conveniently got a ground there and a ground there that we connect to our ground tabs. So you can see this has been very well thought through. So when this is connected to here, we're in this throw, then that means we're actually going to be going through our circuit board. Now, let's move that out of the way. Let's have a look at what happens to the LED in that case. So this is connected to here. So let's have a look. And here we can start at plus nine volts, which is fed off the battery here. So this is actually going into there and power ground is here. This is the ground for our entire circuit actually. So we've got nine volts and that could be a battery clip like this one. We could actually feed our nine volts into there and our ground into there like that. PG means power ground. So we've got this now connected and then this goes into our current limiting resistor. Now you'll see here that the, there's no trace there, it disappears. And the reason for that is it goes over onto the back. Now if we think about this here, we're here in this circuit. And if we turn it over, we're here. And you might be able to see actually on the circuit here, we've now got a trace that goes up here to the LED. So let's have a look at that on this side of the board. So it's coming out here and it's going to the anode of our LED. That's what the A stands for. Through our LED, and I've temporarily misplaced the LED, otherwise I'd place it on the circuit. I saw it around here earlier. No, I can't see it now, oh, there it is. So, got our anode. Check I got this the right way around. And then our cathode here. And from our cathode, we're going to go down here to this square pad. Now look at our square pad here. So these are the same. This is just the different sides of the same thing. Because this is connected to this, this is connected to this, and this is connected to this, we are now connected via these traces to ground. And in fact, all of these are connected to ground. Hence, all, everything that's green on this is connected to ground, basically. So we've made our LED circuit. It goes 9 volts through that resistor, up into our LED, back down here, through here, back to ground. So it's going to be on. And that's what we want because we're coming in here. 
we're going into there, into the circuit, out of the circuit, through there and out of the jack output. So when our circuit is on, the LED is on in this case. Now let's consider when these are separate and these are connected together in our other throne position. So what happens now? So the jack comes in here. This is now not connected to anything. It's isolated because it's no longer connected across here. So it continues to here. And then it goes across to here. And where does that go? To our output jack. So we're coming in to here, across to here, straight out. It's bypassed. OK, so now let's consider what happens to our LED in this case. So we've got our 9 volts going in here, goes through the resistor, up into the diode, through the diode, to the square pad. The square pad's now isolated because there's no connection across here. So nothing happens, it's off, it's open circuit. So our LED's off, our circuit is bypassed. OK, and that's correct. But also have a look at this. This is also a ground, and we know that this is connected to this, and not that that matters because it's directly connected anyway, so I have no effect. But this is also connected to this pad here. And this pad, if we look at it, is now connected across there. Now this goes to the input of our circuit. So in bypass mode, not only does this jack go straight out of the jack out, so in to out, the LED is off because this is isolated now, but also the input of our circuit is now grounded. So this is input grounded true bypass. So we can say this is true bypass grounded input and it's true bypass and input with LED actually and we've built that up I'm just put lines between them one step at a time and now we have enough knowledge to use this now there's other things you can do here for example you could ground the output instead if you had a circuit that you particularly thought would be best grounding the output or you can manipulate your switching to do things like ground the input and the output on bypass using a slightly more sophisticated system. Now it is worth noting that I'm just talking at the moment about these style of switches. Now, if you think about this wiring here on this actual switch, you could see that you can on these different poles, you could run a wire from there to there and to there. You could run a wire from there to there yourself. And it would have the exact same effect. You don't have to use one of these boards. You can actually hardwire this switch yourself once it's in the pedal box. But most manufacturers these days prefer, as we've seen in this more modern electroharmonics pedal, to use their own little board. And you might notice that it's wired up differently to this. Um, and so it's a slightly different wiring. Sometimes the rows get swapped around. So if you imagine this row, just knocked over the switch. If you imagine this row was up here and this row was down here instead, or they can be in any order as long as they're wired up like this. Now it's worth noting in this video, we've just been talking about these mechanical push button and they're obviously three pole dual throw switches. What we haven't looked at is the style of switch you'd find in a boss pedal such as this DM3, where you push it and it turns on and the LED comes on and you push it again and it turns off. And that uses a slightly different form of switching, which I will cover in a future video. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. I'm Stu from Music Technology. Keep experimenting and have a great day.